Let's begin with the general notion of what a vector is and talk about some typical notation for vectors. So to write or denote a vector, we'll write it, let's call that vector v for instance. We'll denote a vector with an arrow over it as is typical. And what I'm showing you here is something called bracket notation. So we can write a vector and list the elements of that vector in order. So this would be a two-dimensional vector. And the elements listed between the brackets are known as components, or the components of that vector. So because this is a two-dimensional vector, we can use our previous notation and write that that vector is an element of R2, meaning those components are real numbers, for instance. Okay, these are just placeholders with A and B. Similarly, I could define a three-dimensional vector also in bracket notation. I'll just label the components A, B, and C, respectively. And because this is a three-dimensional vector, we would then therefore say that this vector lives in R3. So that is the basic underpinning of an algebraic notation for vectors. Um, I'd like to also make this notation cohere with a geometric interpretation, which is common for vectors. So how do I understand a vector in a geometric sense? Well, a vector, it's um, an object, a mathematical object, that has both a direction and a magnitude. Okay, so here's our basic geometric interpretation. A vector is in, let's say, an arrow okay, with a direction and magnitude. So the defining features of a vector. So what's meant by direction and magnitude? Well, the direction, you can think of kind of an angle defined here with the x-axis. We'll call that theta as is typical with vectors. You can think of this vector v that I've drawn in the plane. Here's my x-axis, my y-axis, of course. This vector has an angle associated with it that defines its directions. And the magnitude of that uh, vector is just the length of the vector. So there we have the algebraic notion of a vector. We can write it in bracket notation by simply listing the components in order of that vector. We can also realize a vector in a geometric sense as an arrow in a plane or in three space. I can also draw that as well with a direction and a magnitude. So what would this look like in three space? Well, we just kind of extend things in an intuitive way geometrically. So I have an x-axis and a y-axis. I need three axes, of course, here to define three space. This would be just an image of R3. And if I want to define a vector in three space, let's see, let's say for instance, we're going to define the vector one, two, three in R3. So that means I move in the uh, X direction with weight one, in the Y direction with weight two, and in the Z direction with weight three. So again, it's a little bit hard to draw in three space, but you can imagine here's kind of the shadow of that point. And there is my vector in R3, so it's its arrow emanating from the origin. When we have a vector, because it has a direction, we typically specify where it begins. So this would be called the initial point of the vector. In this case, this is a vector with initial point at the origin. And this point where it ends is usually referred to as the terminal point of the vector. Okay, so we start the initial point, of course, and we go in the direction of the terminal point. That defines the direction of the vector. One more little piece of notation. When a vector initiates at the origin, or its initial point is at the origin, that vector is said to be in standard position. And one other sort of nice aspect of vectors that makes kind of our mathematics consistent is I can take any vector, let's say this vector v, and I've just sort of done my best here to, to create a carbon copy of that vector v. I can move that vector anywhere I want in the space, let's say in the plane, for instance. And even though it doesn't have the same initial point and end point, it does nonetheless have the same direction. Let's say there's the same angle theta and the same magnitude, i.e. the same length. So when I create a carbon copy of a vector and just place it somewhere else in space, these two vectors are called equivalent vectors. In other words, they're mathematically identical. Okay? And a nice aspect of vectors is when I do computations and when I do mathematics involving vectors, which we'll see in just a moment, it doesn't matter where I place the vector. In other words, what I call the origin, the mathematics will be consistent throughout. So we're going to get similar results for equivalent vectors. Okay, so just in summary, a vector basically for our purposes here is an arrow with a direction and a magnitude. I can express a vector with an arrow over it to denote that it has dimension. And the, uh, in an algebraic sense, I just list the components of that vector in order.
So A, B, this is a two-dimensional vector. This is a three-dimensional vector. It lives in R3. And I can similarly draw a vector in R2 and R3 to capture that same idea.